So this goes to the issue, this was one of the issues that um, was really problematic to me. Uh, it, again, this is the concept of measurable objectives and minimum thresholds. The, in the way uh, draft chapter eight is written uh, right now, the well, the monitoring well in our area, which is the monitoring well on the east side of the river, um, the blue line, the blue jagged line there is just, those are the water levels. So those, the top, the spikes, the top part of the spike is the spring measurements. The bottom part of the spike is the fall measurements. So you can see that there's a lot of influence. Uh, there's recharge of that well, and I'm sure that's being influenced by the flow of the Salinas River. Um, we just got the, they just got the April 2019 measurement up, and it's, the water levels went up by, what's up? 20, almost 30 feet in a few months over the winter with that river running the way it was. So, um, but if you look at the trend, the, what they were proposing for the minimum threshold is that is that red line, um, and that was unacceptable to me. That, that we would have been we would have been in violation, you know, and would have and have been for the last since 2000. I think it's 2012. Um, so that wasn't going to work for us. Um, the, uh, and then what they were proposing for the measurable objective is something that we hadn't seen since 2000, a level that we had seen since 2005. Um, but, and our, we were the, we, we yelled and screamed the loudest, but some of the other GSAs were saying the same thing. So the chapter A is being redrafted to change those measurable objectives to be something at minimum, mainly minimum thresholds to be something that's more acceptable to us to give us time to get our water levels climbing back up again. So that was a big issue that is not quite an issue a few weeks ago. Um, How do you think this would change with more monitoring wells within our area? This is all based on that one well. One yeah. Well. yeah. You know, uh, I looked at um, our other production well levels, um, and the, the, the trends are somewhat similar. Um, we, well, if you look at really, if you look at the trend there from um, oh, I don't know, say 2014 to 2019, the ups and downs, ups and downs, they're really staying about the same, right? I mean, it's it's a stable level. It's, it goes up and down with with winter. In, in summer, but it, it's stable. Um, we were see, we see the same thing in our production levels. Uh, we get that seasonal variation, but if you if you just plot you know the mean, it's pretty stable, and we're not seeing any kind of impact. Um, I really think that if we can get uh, our our neighboring um, some of the neighboring vineyards to um, uh, reduce groundwater pumping through the use of recycled water or whatever. I think that's going to that's going to benefit our district. But what we're doing, I don't think, is having any adverse impact. I think we're still. Um, I have a question. This the well, the DWR well. Um, it's tapped into the groundwater basin, or is it tapped into the Salinas undercurrent? Because how close this to the river? It's it's. Uh, uh, it's the ground. It's Paso Robles groundwater uh, aquifer. Okay. And it's it's sealed through, cased off through the upper alluvial. Okay. So, so I think we're definitely seeing some bleed through from the from the alluvial down into the uh, uh, Paso Robles, mm -hmm. but it's not screened in the alluvial. If it was in the alluvial, we would see water levels that would be about the river level. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see the next slide. There's a question. Do you have a question? Well, you said well, how does this uh, relate to other wells in the area? And I can tell you that our ranch well, even when we were irrigating alfalfa, never varied more than 20 feet. It's currently standing at 157, something like that. And the most it was pumped down was to like 137. Mm -hmm. So it's evidently atypical of the other wells in the area, but it's it's not being officially noticed. And that's, that goes to, um, that it goes exactly to the, the uh, issue that we were talking about earlier, is, the, is monitoring. the monitoring well, the getting the monitoring points and the, the population monitoring wells expanded. Because I really think what we're gonna see is, 
you know, along the, the Salinas River corridor, things are quite a bit quite different a, than well, they I are. Actually, I actually asked Derek Williams um, about the monitoring specifically uh, because there's a list of like seven or eight criteria that each well has to meet to be accepted. And I said, you know, I don't know who created those criteria or why or when. Um, but are they set in concrete? Can, can each well be missing one or two criteria and still be included in the monitoring group? Why is it such a restricted number? Hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. I got a question, Mom. Which, which well are you referring to? The one right on the road? The, the one, one right on the road. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Okay. That would probably be in the slingest. The other one's probably out. Well, the one in the river is in the river. The yeah. other one is, you know, I don't know. I don't know. What, what about the one out in the field? Up Magdalena? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, that's the level that I'm talking about. Is that, that's our main ranch well. The one in the river is a supplemental well. Okay, but the one way out in the field where they're here, in the middle of grapes, is that the one you're talking about? No, we, I, we actually, that's all taken care of by Jerry Lohr. I don't know anything about that well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure if you were referring to the one on the no, road. No, only, only to the, uh, on the west side of the road. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this I just wrote, um, I think the only thing I'll hit on it is in the, the middle bullet. Um, basically, the based on the analysis of the consultants, uh, they believe that the uh, under current conditions, the, there's a net deficit of, uh, on an annual basis of about 14,000 acre feet. Now that's spread all over the basin, um, but I mean, obviously there are areas where there is, you know where the imbalance in recharge versus usage is much greater than other areas. Um, but that's that's really kind of the number that, that we're going to be reporting to DWR in the, uh, in, the, in the plan, and that's the number we're trying to make up. And just so, just for perspective, um, our, you know, San Miguel's proposed wastewater treatment plant expansion will include uh, recycled water um, element to it. Um, we would produce on an annual basis uh, in the near term um, around 200 acre feet. Uh, and, in the, and in the long term, it would, you know, over the next four years, we think that might climb to 500 acre feet. So we're going to help that, but we don't have the ability, you know, we're not, we're not the big gun you know, in the room. Um, we can help, and we can certainly help things locally within our part of the aquifer, but we're not going to be the solution. Um, this is uh, hard to see, probably, uh, and this is going to be discussed at tomorrow's cooperative committee meeting. Um, this really is, a, is an outcome of the revisions that were made to Chapter 9 um, based on last months cooperative committee meeting. But, um, and, 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 and as was described in chapter nine now, it's a, there's management actions, there are tiered levels of management actions. Um, management action level one, again, I, I would call them kind of the carrot type management actions. It's promoting best management practices among all users and pumpers within the basin. Um, there's very little, uh, pressure, I would say, to among pumpers to do, I think if somebody wants to be a prudent user of groundwater, they will implement tier uh, level one uh, management actions. If they choose not to, they're going to have to wait until the trigger happens for the level two management actions, and then when that happens, there's, it's a little more punitive. It's you know, pumping restrictions, it's, it's tiered pumping rates, it's uh, uh, it's, there's a there's a whole sort of uh, uh, menu of things that can be applied. None of them, and it's the way the plan is written right now, and it was mentioned earlier. None of them right now are cast in stone. They are they are things to be considered in the future if if we're not moving towards sustainability under level one management actions. Okay. 
So what that means is, you know, day one after this plan is approved, we're just going to keep doing the best that we can do. And we, we're probably doing more than, quite frankly, other than maybe the city of or other than anything else in the basin now. So we're just keep doing what we're doing. But anyway, that's the way it's tiered. And then if level, it, at any time, if a group of, if a GSA or a collective group of GSAs decide that they would like to initiate a project the way it's written right now, then they can get together and negotiate the terms of, of whatever that might be, uh, evaluate the cost and the benefit to whoever it is in the basin, decide how, what the scope of that project might be, how it's gonna be paid for. So there's no obligation to fund any projects right now, nor even there's a list of possible projects of which our wastewater treatment plant recycled uh, water project is included, but there's no obligation on any on the part of any GSA to fund any project under the way that the plan is written right now. And that's something that, that I, I think was important to me at least, because I didn't want to fund, I didn't want to help fund a state water project for Creston. You know, it would never do us any good. Right, we funded by the beneficiaries of said, said project. <clears throat> So that so that's uh, the way the plan is currently the form is currently in. There would be no no obligations on our part to fund projects that we didn't want to fund that we didn't see would value would, would benefit. Okay. So level one management actions is just encouraging best management practices to optimize and reduce groundwater use. And really, the way the plan is written, urban areas we already do that. You know, I mean, so it isn't something, I mean, we're going to continue to do that. That Kelly and I have a meeting with the county's yeah. water conservation group tomorrow to talk about that. And they told us they're to help yeah. us do that. Mm -hmm. but, but it really, uh, the way the plan is written and the, and the, and the, the itemized level one management action really are a lot more agricultural uh, for the agricultural users. Uh, inter you know, initiating a well interference mitigation program to include rotating groundwater use on agreed upon schedules to optimize and reduce groundwater use, well spacing requirements. Again, nothing that every GSA gets to decide how they, which one of level one management actions of these or any they determine are viable and they can implement those as they wish. Promoting stormwater capture, I think that's something that we would like to do more of. And then again, we're not going to follow irrigated ground. But that under this level one, it would be voluntary, not mandatory. And then level two. Oh, yeah. I have a question. How much time is spent on developing the best management practices? How much time would you guys spend on that? The, the best management practices. How much time are you spending on developing this? In this plan? Yes. And how much money is being spent on that? That really, very really little. It's really just listing things that are already pretty well identified in the literature. Because I I just had a concern that we were going to recycle the same uh, best management practices that were identified five years ago, that the county and the Lost House RCD spent tons of money on developing. Okay. I think a lot, some of those, if not a lot of those, are getting cut, cut and pasted into this document. Yeah, it, not, it wasn't a start from scratch on that stuff. Okay. Uh, level two again, you know, uh, this is uh, this is a uh, uh, dropping the care a little bit and picking up the stick. So it would include mandatory pumping reductions in specific areas where there's identified um, uh, identified <coughs> problems. Uh, develop, developing the funding structures to pay and implement for alternative programs or projects. So again, no obligation yet to pay to, to fund those projects, just developing funding structures. And I think the, the, what was in, being envisioned here is, you know, if, if, say us in the county and maybe the city of Pass Robles decided to fund a, 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 a say a Salinas River excess flood water diversion and recharge project. If it made sense for our part of the basin and we thought it would benefit us, then we might be part of that group that would study it and then, you know, if it made sense, fund it and, and operate it. So that's how, that's how that's envisioned. 
And then the projects, there are some listed. Uh, the, again, it's clear in the report. Yeah, well, behind the blade. <clears throat> oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, it, it's clear in uh, Chapter 9 and Chapter 10 that these are uh, for consideration purposes only. Um, uh, you know, each of the GSAs sort of likes some of the projects. It's, some of the GSAs like, well, like some of these projects, none of them. Nobody liked that they, we agreed to let them be listed uh, for, for future consideration. And that's where they are. Obviously, the top bullet, uh, wastewater treatment, uh, recycled water projects, uh, you know, both the, um, us and the city of Paso Robles are, are uh, proceeding down those lines. Paso Robles has theirs built, and it's going through testing right now. Um, so they've got theirs. Um, there's been some discussions about uh, potentially uh, using the Nasi water up in our part of, of, the, of the aquifer, our part of the groundwater basin. There's a lot of interest uh, from some of the big vineyard owners uh, in possibly doing that. Uh, so that's a whole <coughs> conversation that's happening right now. Whether or not that will come to fruition, the only if nobody's going to ask us to pay for it. Unless you know, unless we think it will benefit us. Um, you know, so, so again, I think let me stop there. And that's kind of a briefing. I think we're going to learn more tomorrow uh, at the cooperative committee meeting. Um, so let me stop it. I have a comment. I don't know how my colleagues feel about it, but I actually recommend straight from the San Lucas Nias Dam from the GSP. Um, without a concession from well, the city of San Luis Obispo that we'll get some uh, non-cemental water appropriation in return. Um, Salinas River used to, historically, there was a document, give your the document about the Salinas River had to flow so many, it had to flow at least once a year past the town. It was supposed, the Army to, it's supposed to meet this non Right, well, San Luis Obispo kind of um, is, is wrong on that, and I would not support the Swings River Dam being raised without getting Nassman water in return. I would totally block that. I just, I think that we've asked repeatedly in the past for, um, you know, the Swings Dam to be um, released. Concerning the most of that water, I think, benefits San Luis City. 